Uh, yes, g'day and welcome to Club Prairie Fire, the home of tequila, Tabasco and the Duckworth Lewis Stern system. Cooking in the CPF kitchen today, we have the first ever series defeat for the Baz Ballers with them going down in the fourth test versus India. We will be getting Ollie and Michael Vaughan's takes on that. Australia, they win its 100th T20 International to make it a clean sweep, 3-0 against New Zealand. I reckon we'll have comments from a bloke that probably played in the first one ever for Australia, uh, Adam mm-hmm. Gilchrist. And those... Crazy Dutch bastards. I know we were wondering what happened. Yes, they got it done against the Nepalese. Uh, tight finish there. Congratulations to the mighty Dutch. Uh, let's get into it. Welcoming the man who put the oh my in the oh five Ashes victory. It's Michael Vaughan. And the mighty punisher of the Monty Panesar. It's Adam Gilchrist. And <laughs> a man who gave a club prairie fire had away last Wednesday night, I believe. <laughs> it's Ollie Silverton. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Hello, hello. 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 Can, can we can we just go straight to the hot topic? Yeah. Uh, Ollie, yeah, <laughs> you, yes or no? <laughs> that's, oh, that's on. oh, so those listening, brutal. So no, those listening, you've just put the cap back on your head, so you didn't give it away. I didn't give away. It's very very valuable, um, but it was a. So successful- the story was though, just to reset, Ol, that you were going on a date last Wednesday, and. We sort of worked out that in the event that you managed to, um, what would you say? How would you describe it? Get one through the pads. Um, <laughs> you would, uh, you would give the young lady a hat. But we haven't. Well, that uh, was we haven't. Yeah, that was what was tossed up. It was actually from my side. It was three dates. Was 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 the right. rule because um, you know I need a replacement hat that hasn't arrived yet. I would never give it up without a replacement hat. Um, so <laughs> that is where we are, where we're at. So no, not um, not three dates down. Um, there was a second date yesterday though. So we are one nearer. So by next week, it could be, it could be hat handover and handshakes. <laughs> right. Where I'm was the get... second date, Al? Um, she actually cooked. Um, it was uh, yeah in, uh, in, was in in Double Bay. Yeah. Oh, very posh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah very posh. Yeah. It's no could you. It's no very. could. <laughs> no. Well, that's that's exciting. And I assume when you say cooked, you mean food, because we've yeah. all seen Breaking Bad. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Right. That's past good. The number. Yeah. That's, that's very good. Now, uh, Vaughny, you um, again look like you're in witness protection. This is um, it's very, very dark there. Have you? How long ago did you wake up to do this podcast? 14 minutes ago. <laughs> how long does it take you to – can you get well, going that quick in the morning? Yeah, I'm just about – I mean, the, the light's coming up now. I can see it uh, through my windows. It's a bit grim out there, uh, a bit wet, uh, usual kind of stuff here in Cheshire. Uh, but the light will come through. Give us, give us 10 or 15 minutes and it's going to be glorious. Uh, it's been a great week, though, uh, Prof. It's been a fantastic week for English cricket. One of the great weeks celebrating another uh, world-class uh, superstar that we've unearthed, Shoei Bashir. Mm. That's what we're celebrating. Second Test match, eight wickets. You know, he's the, he's the new uh, Ravi Ashwin, mm. and we've unearthed him. So we're celebrating a, a new superstar in English cricket. So which is uh, which is great. I I absolutely love the blind positivity that English cricket has uh, got themselves involved in at the moment. It's refreshing. We will get into some of the comments from Ben Stokes post-match, which were fascinating. Just before we do dive deep into that fourth test between England and India, Gilly, how are you over in Perth, mate? You're surviving? You're having a bit of downtime? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Nice, quiet little run of uh, time at home here. I um, Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed sitting back from afar. Australia's obviously had a couple of little um, hit and giggle games against New Zealand in the T20. Um, made it close a couple of times just to keep the punters interested, but swept the floor with the um, the Chapel Hadley Trophy. Uh, I think I did indeed play in the very first one of those 100 victories um, that you mentioned, Prof, back against New Zealand at Eden Park. That was when the Kiwis went all retro, which was outstanding. The, the Marshall Twins had the uh, Afros that uh, anyone from the 70s would have been very, very proud of. Uh, but, yeah, it's been just sitting back and observing, observing what's unfolded uh, on foreign shores, particularly that in India. Um, I think you're spot on about uh, Bashir Vaughan, uh to the point where I see Baz is calling for county cricket 
pitches to be uh, uh, similar in makeup to that in Ranchi, which I noticed you might have changed your opinion of uh, over the course of five days. I saw a, an early tweet and then a maybe a corrective mention a little bit later on, but um, mm. that'll be interesting to see um, see in the north of England. Is this a call for the? Are we going to eliminate the opportunity for people to become legends of the game if in the north of England the sticky dog on the Tuesday night is now a dust bowl? Is that well, is that the concern? I, I think that's what he's after, Baz. He's uh, he's obviously after. Uh, I don't know how he's going to do it. I mean, he's done remarkable things and uh, he's an incredible leader. But I don't mm. know how he's going to um, change our weather. I don't know how he's suddenly going to. Um... <laughs> he's good. Yeah, I know he's very good, but how he's going to change our northern weather to um, ninety degrees, so the dust, <laughs> so the dust bowls can be there. But I will say to Baz that if he has done his research on, uh, you know, cricket up north uh, and, and particularly playing on a Tuesday night in uh, in Yorkshire, mm. a sticky dog is very similar to one in Ranchi, because mm. a sticky dog does spin. So maybe. The yeah. old uncovered, the old uncovered wickets need to come back because then the ah. spinners do. You go back into the, you know, the sixties and seventies when it was uncovered. All the right. spinners, you know, they used to get loads of wickets because it sticks. What what does Warnie used to say? It's great saying. Yeah. If, say, it, if it if it seems it's going to spin. Exactly. Now, yep. Maybe that maybe that's what England uh, need to go back to uh, uncovered wickets and then it'll start to tweak. Then the Bashirs, the Hartleys. I mean, again, Tommy Hartley twenty wickets in the series, remarkable. Another great celebration for English cricket. Holly, so this week's been a, a really good week for English cricket to celebrate some fantastic new individuals coming into the team. And the good thing is, sorry, just a footnote to that, if you ask Mark War, England's still a chance of winning this 4-3. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, you don't, you don't need to ask. England still think they can win 4-3, not Mark War. <laughs> Very good. Now, we will sink our teeth deep into that fourth test um, just a little while. Before we do, Ollie, do you want to just jump in? I, I believe yeah. we are celebrating today. We have a little sponsor. Is that right? That was it. I teased it last week, everyone, <laughs> but... This episode's got a sponsor, and, and you know, and it and it's professional. It's been back and forth with the script, so I, I want to get it right. Okay, so it's brought to you by NordVPN, uh, and if you don't know about them, they absolutely you should. They're big in the podcasting game, and uh, well, basically, what they do is hide your location so you can watch whatever you want, which is going to be big for us for a few reasons, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you why first. So um, all you have to do is click of a button and you can go to one of their 5,000 locations around the world. So if you want to watch cricket in India at the moment, but you're in the Caribbean, they've got you covered. And because they love Club Prairie Fire, they've given us a little deal. So nordvpn.com slash CPF, you get a massive discount off the plan for three months and a gift. And it's risk free with the 30 day money back guarantee. And this sponsor update, unbelievable, <laughs> very exciting. It, it, it's needed because of the social update, which comes from Cluj. They've been back in touch. Our man Aaron's been back in oh. touch mm. um, from Cluj. And he has said the European Cricket Network want us, and I'm just working out uh, exactly the details, to go to Malaga in the next few weeks for the competition. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been no joke. Should, I'll just let my wife know. Should I? Yeah, going to go grab my passport. <laughs> so, my passport's um, in date. Yeah. Exactly right. So, if you want to watch us over there, if it all happens, then you know NordVPN. You can jump on from Australia and stream it um, because you know we're in negotiations. We'll, we'll talk. We're talking at the moment, um, but it's very exciting that you know they had Graham Swan last year, and obviously they want to level up a bit with Club Prairie Fire. Yeah. Mm. Oh, this is tremendous. So, did you you say? So NordVPN, this is outstanding. You can watch whatever you want. Yeah. Is that just cricket or is that whatever you want and they won't be able to locate you? It, it is whatever. <laughs> clarify this. One of the lines was, are you trying to keep your private time private? Um, it was one of the feed lines that other podcasts have used. So, um, just asking for someone. Just asking for a mate. Asking for a okay. mate. Exactly All right. right. All right. Um, and you obviously <laughs> vetted this with our massive legal team, Ol. We're pretty safe yeah, yeah. here, are you? We're, we're very safe. Um, it, it's it's one of the Fantastic. great operations. Just, 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 Ol, just on the Malaga trip, uh, what dates are you talking? Because you do realise I'm quite close to Malaga. Mm. Yeah, I do realise. Um, well, it, it started yesterday and it's on for the next three weeks. And they said, yeah, we'll see what we can make work. So um, yeah, genuinely check your passports. There could be a very exciting trip coming. I'm mm. pretty, pretty sure that that uh, tournament is on Fox 
cricket actually down under. So if you're here, you can look at that. And if not, if you're, if you're more mobile, just use NordVPN to, to log on and you'll be able to find it wherever you want. But uh, Vaughn, I can see your mind ticking. I can <laughs> see your mind ticking. I'll, 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 I'll let you... Ollie, do you get um, yeah, do a bit of paddle tennis in Malaga? It's very good. Uh, Ollie, do you um, do you have a list of all the teams that are playing in this league? Just so I, I can do my research. I, I, I don't want to arrive in Malaga not knowing much about all the teams and all the players. No. So if you can give me a no. list of the teams, that'd be lovely. Absolutely. Yeah. I did have a little look. So some of the games have already started. It's a staggered competition. Um, from England, we've got Wimbledon currently there. I think they're playing in just a Ooh. few hours. Yeah, um, right. They're, they're, they're a good side. Um I'll go through the pools very quickly. So, um, Group A um, is Gina Brescia um, from Italy, Cobra, Hungary, Skanderborg, Denmark, Zagreb, Croatian Heritage uh, from Holland. So, that's just Group A. I won't continue. <laughs> there are se- seven groups in total. I think they probably want us for the Championship <laughs> Week, which is the 18th it, to 22nd uh, of March. Um, but the English teams are Wimbledon and um, Hornchurch are the two. But our mighty uh, Cluj are in Group G. Oh. Um, starting the 15th of March against CIY MS from Ireland, Oslo from Norway, Mouflons from Cyprus, and Kalp Giants from Gibraltar is our Cluj team. Mm. Yeah, some good teams there. Uh, yeah. Hornchurch, I yeah. think, is that, is that up north, Ollie? Is that down south? I think it might be up north somewhere, the Horny Church. Oh, I thought it was towards where I grew up, the South End way, but I could be, yeah. It oh, is. maybe it is. Maybe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up London. north, isn't it? Uh, East London. Oh, East London, is it Horny? I'm going to back, so let's... Uh, I'm going to back Horny Church to win this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Ollie, is this is this like the cricket version of the European Champions League, where it's the biggest clubs in Europe yeah. that have basically come in the top couple in their own local comps? This is massive. Is no, it as huge. big as the, the soccer version, the football version? Well, viewer numbers is actually bigger. Um, because it yeah. has a lot of It's Indian- not the prize money there, is it? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Exactly right. Um, sponsorship's a bit lower, but um, your yeah, viewing numbers, there's a lot of Indian yeah. interest. We got sent the numbers from the European Cricket Network. It, it's enormous, and hopefully oh. in time, we're going to be on the logo of the Cluj kit. Mm. Very good update. Yeah, I'm going for Cluj. Yeah, very good. Uh, no, anything else in that social update, Ol? I know that uh, people want us to sink our teeth into the fourth test. Anything else? Um, we do have a, a couple of comments that um, caught my attention. There was, there was. Uh, we'll start with the show itself. By the way, the biggest we've had since the Cricket World Cup semi-final. Uh, well, I don't know what happened in the final, but we lost a few Indian viewers. Um, but we've gone over forty thousand um, for the first time in a few months. So that's on just YouTube alone. Mm. That is, which is very impressive. Um, there was a lot of love uh, on socials. Willie Cook on Instagram said it's a great app. Um, and everyone was agreeing with Vaughny that uh, England need to change their style when batsmen play their game, which I think Rooty's got to thank Vaughny for that. Ben, Sto- um, ben Folks yeah. dug in as well for a strike rate of about 20 um, and had a good knock. And the other guys just went uh, their turn. He said, can you please do an episode every single day? I'm changing nappies and it's boring. Um, <laughs> so um, a request from him. But overall, people agreeing with Vaughny. And the main one which Vaughny shared was, of course, the uh, a clip from um, covered Indian, covert Indian, asking uh, for the cameras and the DRS trucks to be shared as he put together a great video <laughs> of them moving <laughs> the line. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Should we should we start there, Vaughny? Um, it's a good place to sort of jump into this test match. It's mm-hmm. because um, you popped it up on socials. The image of the DRS decision against Joe Root in the second innings, and uh, straight away Gilly jumped in and wrote plum. And yeah. said, thoughts, Prof? And I said, yes, absolutely plumb. So just so I know, what is the English perspective of that DRS decision? Well, uh, the, the, the English perspective was, was a little bit dubious. Because <laughs> what, what, what we saw on our television screens in the UK um, wasn't quite what came out uh, in the end in terms of the decision. But uh, my, my problem is this. If you're watching at home and, and then, the, by the way, they never showed that, that dismissal again all afternoon. Mm. It kind of it went. To, you know, it doesn't matter. It's Joe Root. Don't worry. We don't want to show him. He's not England's best player. It wasn't shown again. I just think for transparency, uh, there needs to be a camera in the truck so we can absolutely see. So as soon as you go to DRS, camera in the trucks, and we just see the operation. Whoever's operating that technology, whether it's Virtualized Australia, Hawkeye, that's being used in uh, India. Um, let's just see how it comes out. 
the the full process of how they get to that decision. Because look, I'm not saying, and I know you want me to say it, but I'm not yeah, saying there's I any don't. cheating <laughs> at all. What what I am what I want for the game of cricket in general is transparency and integrity. Because as soon as you get a, a dodgy one that we see at home, and obviously England fans will say it's not out, India fans will say, of course it pitched in line. Well, if you go to the trucks and it shows us exactly how they come up with that ball being over 50% in line with the stumps, and they prove to us exactly how it works and operates, no problem. No problem whatsoever. By not showing us into the trucks and having a camera in there uh, and, and kind of giving that person who's operating the system that week a bit of profile as well. You know, you'd be able to have a, a trendy dude on, on, on camera just giving it the, the jiggy and the, could do a bit of dancing. We, we, um, we could sponsor it. We could, we could sp- be the background sponsor, yeah, CPF. Yeah. We, we haven't got any money, but... Um, but he could be no, having a couple could, of tequilas while he's doing it. Maybe he's got some could, Ravi Shastri shades maybe, on. Maybe he yeah. was. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's what happened, Pro. Maybe he was uh, <laughs> three or four. Maybe he was, he was doing the... Uh, maybe he was operating Hawkeye, uh, Phil Tufnell style on the Club Profile podcast. <laughs> <laughs> A tequila bottle deep. <laughs> uh, I, I just think, I, I just think for the game in general, we need transparency, and it's uh, there's always debates, and there's always, uh, uh, it's always hot on social media, isn't it? And it always lights up. Uh, I think the game's better than that. I think it can uh, put that all to bed by having a camera in the trucks. Did you see? So I saw, and I'll credit. Is it Simon Hughes? His podcast. He had the the chap from Hawkeye on there to explain that decision. What caught my interest in that, he made reference to how in tennis the same technology can often pick up where there's there only needs to be 1% of the ball like bouncing on the line in tennis and it's classified as in. But often you'll get it where there's – he said there's – he sort of said there's no percent in but it's not completely out. <laughs> like he explained it. And so what they do is they actually fudge it by 1% just to show that it's in. It was a bit confusing, but he did say they can they can tailor the TV image exactly how they need to if they feel that, that that's what they want to express. So, I'm not, again, not casting opinion on whether this has happened in the case of Joe Root's dismissal, um, but it was an interesting dis- discussion around uh, what their capabilities are in that truck. So, so you're going to camera in there, eliminates all doubt, Vaughnie. I just, I mean, I don't understand why you wouldn't. You know, if you look at cricket now, the two umpires out in the middle are not as important as someone operating the technology because there's three reviews per team. Most of the time, every single dismissal goes upstairs. It goes into the trucks. It's very rarely that you get to a stage where no one has any reviews. So the person operating the technology is actually more important these days than the two umpires out in the middle. Mm. Can I play Mm. devil's advocate for a second? Bonnie, let's say we build the profile of one of these DRS operators um, mm. and then he makes a mistake in a country that changes the outcome of a game mm. where that country, let's say, some of their fans aren't quite so understanding. Um, it happened recently in the Six Nations rugby, didn't it, Ollie, where a, a, a well, what's it? it's a TMO in the rugby, uh, France mm. v Scotland, mm. and he basically had to leave the country, got death threats, all that stuff. So I'm just wondering whether... Yeah, but he, he that- would want to leave. He would want to leave Scotland anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Hey, um, I wanted to ask you. They're calling it Vaughnie, the first official loss of the Basball era. I want to ask you: Did they play Basball? No, no, and that's why I'm going to say they didn't lose. So Basball didn't lose because they didn't play Basball this week. So you can absolutely scrap that. Um, it wasn't a loss for the basketballers. It was a loss for the old school, um, traditional um, kind of style test cricket that England have played for many, many generations. And they went back to that. It's the, uh, the lowest scoring rate in uh, basketball history. Um, I think, uh, Ollie, you, you can, uh, I think you can prove that for me, can't you, Ollie? Yes, you can. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, they had a session. They had a session on day one where they scored at two point sixes. I mean, that was proper proper cricket from the old days. So this week, I, I don't think you can say that the basketballers lost because the basketballers didn't play this week. But the week before, they were basballing, weren't they? Like Joe was yeah, yes. sweeping. 
Yeah, yeah. They, oh, they lost the week before the Baz Bulls, but not this week. Yeah. So you, you can't. Well, it's, it so it's the first. So either way, let's. I mean, let's. Either way, they're shit. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. So I didn't yeah. frame that correctly, yeah. Gilly. F- test match series. Yeah. First ah, official right, 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 test match right. series. Because they're really good at drawing test match series yeah. when they were basballing. Lots of that. Well, that's winning. Moral victory. Sorry. Uh, mm. We need to send around like a, a sheet that explains how the English win <laughs> works because I don't understand it. Okay. Um, so lots to take away from that. Um, as you said, they have uncovered two great spinners. Mm. Um uh, Hartley and obviously Bashir, which is very exciting. Um, yeah. You, do you think they'll kick on from here? Obviously, there's been a lot of Aussie spinners, Gilly. You can attest to this. Yeah. They've gone to the subcontinent that have, I mean, good friend of the show, Stephen O'Keefe, took nine for in Pune once and yep. then he kind of disappeared. Um, yeah, Jason Crazier took 12, yep. I reckon. Might have even been in Ranchi or maybe not. But uh, certainly, uh, yeah, that's the challenge, isn't it? You Them getting back into their home system. And even contemplating getting a game, well, it seems even for their county teams, let alone for England, back in home conditions. So uh, it, it is more and more cricket played across, I guess, subcontinent, certainly India, and then tours into the UAE if it's against Pakistan. So that there'll be opportunity for them again. But I guess it's nice to know that they've got a next layer of spinner and it's not just all about sort of Jack Leach bowling at holding an end up and you know, supporting those seamers around him. They've got some real um, talent there. That's that's probably the, the crux of it. Just just on the county game, how do you think Nathan Lyon's going to go when he doesn't get picked and Tom Hartley's <laughs> obviously going to play ahead of him? I reckon he'll wake up every morning and look at his bank balance and feel pretty happy about life. If, if as long as, the, as long as the sterling pounds are hitting the account, he'll be relatively happy. But... Uh, mm. It'd be be good for him to for both of them to to bowl together, wouldn't it? I think um, Tommy would enjoy that alongside the goat. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, in the history of county cricket, I, I, bearing in mind four day county cricket starts in April, mm. I, I don't think a team has ever gone in with two spinners in April. I, I don't think a team has ever gone in with a spinner in April. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> somehow. Uh, Lancashire are going to have to try and find a way of getting both uh, their international spinners into their team uh, in April. When, um, look, if, if you're not arriving with your if, with your kind of uh, your wetsuit on in April to play county cricket, um, you've you've not quite done your research and what the kind of uh, technical side of your operation needs to be going about. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'll be intrigued how Baz is going to change. Maybe he'll put some roofs on the ground and put some heaters on and. You know, he, he, can get, he could probably get that done in a month. And he's got about a month to sort that out for county cricket to get all these spinners the opportunity. Bashir's the same at Somerset. There's Jack Leach down there as well. So they're going to try and find yep. a way of getting Leach and Bashir playing for Somerset, Hartley and Lyon playing for Lancashire. Uh, so I'm intrigued to see how Baz can get these pitches dry, dusty, and uh, these grounds dry just to play cricket in April. Never mind get the spinners playing. Yeah. Hey, I think um, geez, Zach Crawley just continues to to grow. I think doesn't he? Yeah, he, he, he didn't sort of play match winning innings, did he? But geez, he lays a good foundation every time. Yeah, he's the, he's the greatest ever player to average thirty one in Test cricket. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I'm, I've not seen a better player that uh, is averaging thirty one in Test match. He makes batting look so easy. <laughs> You watch him and he strolls to the crease and before you know he's on 20, 25, 30, 40 yeah. and then 50, raises his back, playing great, hits one down the ground then he whips one through midweek. Oh, here we go, keep going. And before, Oh, he's out. Oh, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It happens every time. Oh, how's that happened? How's he got? Well, he's just got, he's found a different way. He's, uh, he's got to kick on. He's got yeah. to somehow find a way of kicking on these... Uh, these little nice fancy fifties, uh, you know, Gilly. You don't you don't win test matches in India with a little fifty. You got to yeah. get the big one. You got to you got to get the daddy hundreds. He's got to find yeah. a way of getting the daddy hundred or two. How do you do it hey. when you're batting, boys? When you reach thirty, is there like are you doing milestones? Are you changing things along the way? Or are you not looking up at the scoreboard? Uh, I would think. Oh, you're not – well, I personally wasn't looking at the scoreboard. You're just sort of just trying to remain sharp, trying to keep some rhythm going. If you've got a bowler that you feel like you can get after a little bit, you, you, you 
to take that opportunity and then if something changes, you, you reassess uh, to an extent, which is everything that Vaughan was mentioning last week about that change in philosophy or that, that subtle, um, you know, just rounding of the philosophy. Uh, but that that's about it. But, yeah, there's there are some players like that, isn't there, Vaughan, that just seem to make it look so easy but just don't quite need – know how to press on for that big one but it'll be better for the experience jeez that that then there are some pretty tough batting conditions that have been pretty much in four tests they've got another one to go so it's not easy to, to go out there and just completely dominate and, and on the flip side of that india have unearthed some nice young talent throughout this series haven't they so they look ridiculously strong and being able to cover off different bases when they lose uh, such wonderful players of the you know of the ilk of kl rahul and virat and, and co yeah, I, I mean, let, let, let's be honest, India are missing five world-class performers in Bum, Rapant, Virat, Kale, Rahul, Mohamed Shami. So it's it's half an Indian side. So the future looks very rosy for Indian cricket. I, I mean, Zach Crawley, I, I'll go back to him. Batting in, in India at the top of the order is the easiest place to bat. That new ball is is, is the best best time to be batting. It comes onto the bat. There's, there's a bit of movement, but not a great deal of lateral, not a huge amount of swing. And all of a sudden, when you... Get to 20 or 30, the spinners come on. Uh, obviously, in the second innings, Ashwin decided to open the bottom, which is, is staggering me that he hasn't done it throughout the whole series against Ben Duckett. Um, but Zach Crawley in India, opening the bat and you get to 50s, uh, you have to make it count. My philosophy was different to yours, Killy. I, I used to just bat time. I used to just yeah. look at the clock and think, oh, it's 11, I'll try me there at half 11, get to 12, and knowing that I would score. But I, I, I ticked down my kind of time in the middle through, through time. You know, it's my philosophy to just right, I'll be here in fifteen. If, if a if a sesh, if a spell was happening and a bowler was bowling really well, I would look at the clock and go, right, I'm going to be here in fifteen minutes' time, and just tick it off. I get there, I, I give myself a pat on the backside, right, I've survived fifteen. And survival in, in in this modern era sounds negative. Oh, you can't just talk about survival, but it was my method to bat a long mm-hmm. period of time, and particularly when I got to fifties. I, I used to I used to hate getting out between fifty and eighty more than naught to twenty because you're in hmm. you know the conditions hmm. you know the bowlers uh, and that's the one thing I say to Zach Crawley he's he's got to rather than just think it's always expansive and and, and taking the opposition on and playing huge risky shots uh, for his career to have a, a really nice number at the end of it you know he's only young and he's got many more Test matches to play for that average to go from thirty one to over forty which he, in this area, you know, that's what the good players are averaging. Uh, it, he's going to have to be a little bit more ruthless. And it, it, if, if I like to say it, a bit more selfish. Yeah. All, all, yeah. all the great batters, I've never met a, a great batter that's not been selfish. He needs to just be a little bit more selfish with his own individual numbers. Yeah. You know, I, 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 can, um, I can relate to your, your time suggestion there batting time the only trouble with batting at seven if you if you set a goal to bat for half an hour and don't worry about anything else basically uh numbers eight nine and ten have been resold so you, your innings your innings is over because you know mcgrath's coming in at 11 and uh, you got to get on with it but uh hey what did, just one last last one prof i know and ollie you want to move on that, no, that all good. Game. the decision to open the bowling in that second innings with the spinners no jimmy probably Pretty critical, wasn't it? At that, well, at that when juncture you, when of that you, match. Yeah, when, when you've got eight overs to bowl, uh, I guess they've just seen uh, India bowl uh, some tremendous spin, so you can kind of understand his his thought. But when Jimmy Anderson's had the wool over Rohit Sharma's eyes for for quite mm. a, a while, and he'd nicked him off in the first innings, and then they give him eight overs, they get hit for forty. So they've yeah. taken a good chunk out of the chase in those eight overs. I'm not saying they would have won the game, but uh, I think with Jimmy Anderson opening the bowl in the legendary, what is he, two away from 700 now? Is it two or one? I think it's two away from 700 against Rohit Sharma. Um, yeah, I think I'd have been going with Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, I was just wondering, on that. we're talking about someone who uh, gets starts a lot in Zach Crawley. I was wondering your take on a very fascinating series from Ollie Pope. A little bit lower. First test, he gets the daddy, the 196, and then uh, struggled since and then avoided the king pair, but it was still as close as you could possibly get to it. What's your take on him uh, in the subcontinent from, from both of you? Well, well, well that 196 is, is remarkable. It'll be talked of as one of England's greatest ever test innings. And, and I'll be honest, I, I think he's an iffy starter. I think when he goes out to the middle, he's a, he's a little bit, uh, 
He's a little bit like a cat on a hot tin roof. He's kind of jumping all over the place. He doesn't seem to get his balance. So it doesn't surprise me that he's got a, a few low scores. Um, it really did surprise me that one 196 because it, it was a remarkable innings. He reverse swept. He played those ramp shots under a huge amount of pressure. Got England into position to win. Uh, also, Jimmy Anderson got a pair. So a couple yeah. of pairs. Yeah, the great Jimmy Anderson's batting didn't come to uh, the party. Ranchi um, played a couple of iffy sweep shots. I think it was the first innings he tried a conventional little dab. I think in a second it was, and he's a good player. I have Jimmy Anderson up there, one of the great reverse sweepers. He plays it well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he really does. He just had an iffy week where he missed it. But uh, yeah, a couple of pairs in the England side. No king pairs? No kings. No kings. No. All no, right. So you're going to be good to do that. Hey, I want to ask you, uh, I want to ask you, Vaughnie, how long has the bang bang been going on with the English side when they get two wickets on the trot? Do you know about the how they all all the fieldsmen shout out bang bang? Oh, is that right? Or is that, is that what, is, yeah? Because then that, even Stokes is, is that new? Is it? I was wondering whether you were doing it in 05. Obviously not. <laughs> I think you need to, what what yeah. I, I, I haven't really um, seen um, Stokes's press conference. I'll be honest he, with he, you. I, I I don't listen to many of them speak now because they do speak in a language that I don't understand sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, well, he spoke of the Bang Bangs in a post-match uh, interview and he said, you know, we got a couple of Bang Bangs today. And we, was, he was talking about the last day when you, know, you had him five for 120 and when Khan got out uh, first ball. I think that's a good uh, Can you speak to him, to talk about Bang Bangs. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Same I, thing? I, think, I, think I, I think the Bang Bang has been quite a, a common <laughs> theme in cricket for a long time. But yeah, the English side right. has brought it, brought it onto the field, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's look forward, just as we wrap up this English test series. Dara Mashala, have I said that correctly? Yeah. Up in the north, nice and cold. Um, will it be 4-1, Forney? Uh, will England play their full-strength side? How do they win this last one? Uh, yeah, well, they'll, they'll play the side that they feel is the best uh, to win that last test match. They're certainly not going to rest players, um, I, I wouldn't have thought. They've got a, a good week off now. I think they've gone to Chandigarh to play a bit of golf, so they'll be in good uh, form uh, going into that last test match. Um, well, I, I mean, Johnny Bairstow plays 100th test. You've got to say that if he was probably on 80 test matches, he might not have been picked. Not had a great series, Johnny. They might have looked at Dan Lawrence, but he's earned the right to... Uh, to get that 100th game, uh, well, I, I think they've got to play Gus Atkinson, the young quick. You know, uh, you know, you look at Ollie Robinson in the last test match, just looked short of a gallop. Understandably, he's just not played any cricket. And then you you throw a, you know, a selection his way and he's uh, not got the overs. He looks the kind of ball that needs a, a few games to get into a little bit of a, a rhythm. So I would think that Gus Atkinson will come back in. Whether Jimmy Anderson plays, we'll have to wait and see. He'll probably want to, but... Mm. Uh, let, let's just wait on that one uh, and the pitch you, you mentioned the cold it's going to suit England in Dharam Masala I mean, it's going to be cold apparently it's going to be a bit of sleet uh, England play well in the sleet and it's it's really good preparation for Baz's idea of playing the spinners in county cricket in April because I think in Dharam Masala it's going to be similar conditions for when they get home so you might get a little bit of a feeling about the spin options uh, what you may or may not require in county cricket in April um, because I think it's going to be a fresh one in Durham. So, so I, 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 I expect England to win. Um, you know, they've been the better team in the series as they were in the Ashes. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, if you, if you go session by session, England have, have, have looked a better team. I'm saying looked a better team, but they just they just have a... We don't play series now to win them. I think people have got to no. understand that the game of cricket has changed in the UK, that we don't play to win them. We play to just bring entertainment, bring joy and unearth new talent. And on earth, new kind of uh, superstar of the future. And that's what we've done. Bashi is the superstar of the future. So England have had a great series. Yeah, yeah, they've unearthed some wonderful talent for India too, which is very kind, very gratuitous of them. I, I think Durham um, that that is a, a former home ground of mine when I was at uh, Kings Eleven Punjab. The best part about that, go on, beautiful stadium, but go up into the foothills, go up to McLeod Ganch up top. This is what the English team need to do. You go up to a little village called McLeod Gange. There's a wonderful bar there called the McClue Bar. You climb up about five sets of steps and you sit on top and you feel like Leonardo DiCaprio. You're looking out 
right across India. You feel like you are the king of the world. Um, go a little bit further up into the actual foothills of the Himalayan mountains. Uh, it's a, a meditation yoga mecca. So, you know, strip off and put on a yak scrotum loincloth uh, mm. and that's all you need for the day's activities and you come back uh, a very, very relaxed operator. So I think that's their best way to attack this test match up in the north of Eng- uh, India. Um, just relax, peace out, maybe go and pay a visit to the Dalai Lama. His residence is just around the corner. Um, yeah, I've met him, can't I've go met him. Has he has he messaged yeah, you? Yeah, you, you met him in the pub, didn't you? I met is he... him in the yeah, Irish bar in. Uh, Dun- yeah. in, in uh, where where was I? I was in uh, <laughs> South <laughs> Africa <laughs> with the cat. Yeah, yeah, I was. Um, uh, just what what did, you, what did you say that bar's called again, uh, Gilly? The Flange Bar. No, the McClue Bar. <laughs> All right. But what what what's the area? You said it, you said something close to being a flange. What was it? <laughs> McLeod Gange. Gange. Gange, yeah, I was like, yeah. oh wow, a bit of flange up there. Um, <laughs> I, I think I think you're right. I think a bit of, you made a really good expression there. Peace out. You know, I think that's yeah. what England's got to do. They'll, they'll be peaced out. They'll they'll be nice and relaxed. They'll take uh, India on. I, I would say that uh, they'll probably play a bit more aggressively. I'm not too sure mm. whether it's uh, it's uh, advised all the time, but uh, oh, I, I don't expect them to have a good go at uh, winning the winning uh, this game. And obviously, if you win the last Test match of the series, it generally means that you've won the series. So that'll be uh, England's goal yes. this week. Yeah, true, true. Oh, oh, yeah. There's you got one, one thing. Oh, yeah, I noticed um, as one Test match we haven't touched on, and I don't want to harp on you, know, England, the forefront of everything, but it's celebrations. Um, you know, we're already winning baseball. We're recreating the game. Normally, it's just a fist pump, helmet off. Do we also Joe Root's a little pinky celebration to Ben Stokes in homage to Elvis yeah. Presley? So again, we're also bringing celebrate, and I'm all for that. We spoke about you know different umpire send offs with the middle finger. I would like to see some more incredible celebrations um, brought to Test cricket, and if it happens, it's thanks to Elvis Presley and uh, Joe Root. What? Sorry, what did he do? Just wave the little pinky? Did he? Yeah, Just... it's subtle. But what it's did subtle. they do? Did they like pink, pinky swear or something? Is that what he did? Or Little little pink wave, which is from the Elvis Presley film that Ben Stokes has been watching oh. all week in his downtime. Yeah, what's it make reference to in Elvis's film? What's what's the um, little pinky mean? So, um, it doesn't. It's not actually that clear overall. Um, but it says, "I don't think I'll ever be able to feel or look like a rock star." But for ten seconds, I might have done. That's what the little pinky was about. Ben watched the Elvis Presley film the other day. He's been doing it all week, so it's a tribute to him. I, I watched that film. film. I don't. I don't remember the pinky bit. Oh, it's just um, interesting because out here that means you've basically got a small beggar. <laughs> Someone it does. does it. Yeah, so, um, yeah right. It does. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A good, it's a good insult. I'll try, uh, I'll, for, ne- for next week's pod, I'll try and find out whether he has got a small pecker. Okay, okay, good, good. Right. good. Very, very kind of you. Oh, I just, and so obviously I asked uh, Vaughny, how does England win the last test? Gilly, how does England win the last test? Peace out. Peace, love and mung beans. I was, hoping, I was hoping you'd yeah. say they don't. Well, no, they don't. <laughs> well, they don't. Well, they, they're going to no matter what, aren't they? <laughs> um, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, but I, I don't think you can all win next week. Okay, all right. <laughs> there we go. Maybe, um, they need to get, maybe they need to get, just showing back out, the, the CPF heritage of, of um, min, minnow-style cricket, maybe they need a little bit of uh, yarn, nickel, lofty, Eaton to get, get pick him at number three. You all familiar mm. with that name? No, don't know who he is. No, he sounds like one of the Lord. Sounds like one of the MCC members, doesn't he? Lofty Eaton as the double bunger. He plays for Namibia, and he just struck the fastest ever T Twenty oh, yes. yeah. of thirty three yeah. deliveries. So get yeah. him at number three. Do you think he's Namibia, got pass- Namibia's South Africa? He'll have, it. He'll have an English passport, won't he? Yeah, he's absolutely. He's flown yeah. over once, I reckon. So get yeah. him in at three. Yeah. Good shout. I'm sure you guys would already be looking at him. That's probably old <laughs> news from Gilly, is it? The deal's probably already done. Hey, uh, let's look at the Aussies now. Let's shift our gaze. Uh, as we said at the top, um, won those three T20 internationals over there in uh, New Zealand. The first one that was uh, came down to the last ball, which was very exciting. Tim David got it done with a beautiful stroke uh, for Four bits, and uh, the Aussies yep. won. Then the other two, we did it quite easy. I just wanted to ask you, uh, Gilly, that um, that team that we saw in the first T20 is that most likely the team that will be 
that 11, yeah, you're giving me the nod there, Vaughn, that will be competing for us during that World Cup? Uh, I would think so. Yeah, that had Warner in it. Uh, Travis yep. Head had no Smith. That was a sort of most glaring omission. Um, uh, Tim David did what he's going to do. He was so impressive. Although the change, no, I think Matt Wade wasn't in that 11, was he? No, so you had Head, yeah. Warner, Marsh, Maxwell, Inglis, David, Short, Cummins, Stark, Zampa, Hazelwood. So would yeah, Short, so- Short walk out and Wade walk in? Uh, I think so, or they might leave Short in there and have Inglis out, but Inglis is pretty versatile. But I think all in all, probably the, the big question around that is is Steve Smith. Is he going to be in that that team or even in the squad perhaps? So um, I don't see him in the starting 11 come, uh, come World Cup time. Because then they have five reserves, right? So four, four, four reserves. Is it 15 or up? You tend to take 16. 15 in the old – was it 16, is it? Might be 16. So yep. Smith might slide in there. Yep. A uh, bit of Nathan Ellis action. Um, yep. If I missed I, think, I, I think the Aussies are, are going to win the World Cup. I do. I, I like that. That, that. I do. I mean, obviously, the, the 50 over world champions, but that, that batting lineup is ridiculous. That has got everything you need in T20 cricket. It's the days of that, we were saying last week, the days of having a, a nerdler knocking it around have gone. They've just mm. got power. Head Warner, Marsh, Maxwell, English, David, Short, or Wade. I'm sorry, but that's uh, that's getting plenty. Yeah, and when you when you add into that the bowling variations, and obviously the they've got the pace, they've got the spin, uh, got plenty of options. Um, I, I think Australia arrive in the West Indies and America as favourites to win. Well, I've just yeah. um, I've just jumped on NordVPN um, to to check out the betting odds. England, India are favourites, three to one or four dollars if you're an Australian. England nine to two, uh, you can get for them. So uh, five dollars, sorry, four five dollars fifty, and Australia yes. six dollars. Third favourites, you can still get on Australia mm. to do it. So third favourites into the World Cup. There you go. That's, uh, I, mean, I, I know. I know we're not allowed to have a punt in the game, but I, I would be having a punt on Australia I if I was allowed to have a punt. You, you, you are, are on it. You, you are on it. Yeah, load up, mate. Yeah. Yeah, take that NordVPN money. We'll never see it. Yeah. Just pop it on <laughs> whoever you up. need to. Um, <laughs> hey, the um, have you spoken to the Bison, Gilly? I know that you're tight with Mitch Marsh. Obviously, his captaincy was a bit of a revelation. Did really well. Have you sent him a text or anything? Yeah, we exchange messages. He, he's a pretty relaxed cat, as we've started to learn. Very comfortable with how things are going. But um, no, he was. Um, he's loving it. He's just enjoying himself and, and just kicking back and now looking forward to getting into some test cricket and not having the, the captaincy where he can just sort of switch off and, and just keep being that uh, casual operator that he is. I think he'll, he'll, uh, he'll either be player of the series in, in the two tests in New Zealand or he'll be knocked over real quick because I think there's <laughs> going to be a couple of green tigers there that are uh, going to create some issues for some, some top orders, um, certainly in the first innings, and the ball might be going around a little bit. So Mitch and Travis, they're going to play with their typical aggressive intent and, and they'll either be knocked over real quick or they'll probably have an 80 ball, 100, something, in, some, not much in between that. Absolutely. So that test starts tomorrow uh, yeah. in Wellington at the Basin. Both of you yeah. played uh, two test matches there in your mm. Sterling careers. I want to ask you guys, uh, what's the best joint to go and have a beer after? Oh, very good, very good question. Just, just, uh, just on the series. Does, does anyone give a shit about this series? Um, <laughs> Neil Wagner. Um, yeah, he's just retired. So he's no, Neil Wagner's Wagner. left. He, he just doesn't... decided to give up. He said, "I'm not, I'm not touching it." <laughs> no interest. Uh, no, uh, it's not got the highest profile. I think uh, certainly in Australia, three tests would be better. I think that. Yeah. Might be. Why is tests. it only two? <sighs> Everything's oh. only two these days. I don't get it. Hopefully, IPL, maybe. Hopefully yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a bit of uh, IPL. Well, New Zealand also. Only... Hey, I tell you a story about you. Right, I did play. I was trying to think if I played two or one test at well, Base I... and Reserve. Yeah. But, oh, 2000 and, 2000 and then 2005 maybe, is yep. that right? Yeah, that's right. 2005, we, I was not out overnight uh, with Damien Martin and woke up the next morning pissing down rain, like rain like you've never seen. So Steve Bernard, our team manager, says, don't, don't worry about going to the ground. He said that to the team. I'll go down there and if there's even one 
moment it looks like the covers are going to come off, we'll get the team bus, come on down. So I took our young son, Harry, who was about three at the time, down to the pool in the hotel and was just playing around with him down there for, I don't know, probably an hour or so. And then next minute the media manager comes running in, panting, says, I finally found you. And what's going on? Everyone's down at the ground. Play starts in 15 minutes. And I'm sitting <laughs> in the pool in the team hotel with my son. And I'm not out. <laughs> so <laughs> race upstairs, throw Harry to Mel, chuck me tracky on, going down, there's a little mini bus there. I drive that. Fortunately, the ground's literally 10 minutes away in Wellington. It's not far at all. Run out of the car, straight to the change rooms, still probably dripping wet, chuck the gear on and walk out to bat. That that was the preparation for the day of batting in a test match. Uh, and you... A, a minute from being timed out. And did and you, you go 100... 162, according to... Uh, yeah, that's what I brought it up. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that was back in the day when timed out wasn't trendy. I mean, it's trendy now. Like, every, every motor dismissal's in the game now, isn't it? But, um, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a worry. But I remember Warney sitting back, choking the life out of a durry in the change rooms later on at the end of that day's play, just going, Gilly, I love you. You've, you've proven... Warm ups are the most overrated fucking thing in history. <laughs> and you should never do another one again. <laughs> very, very good. Hey, um, this obviously this New Zealand top four is pretty world class now. Yeah, it's uh, Kane Williams. Well, he's he's as good as anyone around. He's their best ever, isn't he? Have to be their yeah. best ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he does look like a bloke that goes up to the foothills of the Himalayan mountains. Gets I don't know if he gets the uh, yak scrotum loincloth on, but he certainly looks like he just folds the legs, holds a thumb and forefinger together and just, um, he gets into that trance-like state when he bats, doesn't he? He's good. Mm. Oh, he's good. He's good. He's uh, he's not a buzz baller, but he's good. No. Is he a Yorkie? Yeah, yeah, he's played for Yorkshire. Yep. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. he's played for Yorkshire. I don't, I don't know if he's got 100 on a Tuesday, but I, I think he might have done. He, he did okay for the Yorkies. Uh, absolutely. Uh, New Zealand test batsman Kane Williamson, looking very young here in 2014, hit a fine, if not controversial, mm. 189 to put Yorkshire in charge of the county championship game against Sussex in Scarborough. Oh, he, there you go. He was actually, Great well, there you go. He was caught at second slip by James Treadwell <laughs> off Lewis Hatch on 16. Walk. The umpires were unsure if it carried. Williamson started to walk, oh. turned back and waited and then stayed there. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Ten years ago, exactly. <laughs> so what like... would have happened? Obviously, they can't review that. What are they? Is in there an argument yeah. between the batsman and the second slip? Mm-hmm. Well, he's, Williamson by gesture they... indicated he wasn't sure. So he just kept batting. Sounds, 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 a, sounds a bit like Michael Vaughan at the Adelaide Oval in 2002. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why you send it up to the truck and you just uh, make sure there's some grass. I had someone yeah. working in the truck that day. <laughs> just kept it in there, get the sponsors yeah. in the background. <laughs> uh, very good. All right, well, uh, hopefully the Aussies get it done nice and quick over there in New Zealand. Uh, two Test Match Series uh, we'll be watching. Somewhat. Hey, uh, time for the trivia. Everybody's favourite segment, Ollie. Last week's trivia, uh, the boys absolutely loved from memory. Yeah. Um, they said it needed to be more complex. Was the <laughs> feedback from <laughs> Gilly and Vaughny. It's a bit simple. Have you gone for the same thing or something different? I've gone something different this time because it, there were too many comments about the quiz and not the content. So I've decided just to mix it up. You know, I just wanted people just to focus on the cricket, the hard hitting cricket stuff. Um, so we're going back to the classic when it's just you two without guests. It's a who am I? And it's someone celebrating their birthday today. We like this. Uh, yeah. um, we had Hilton Cartwright, which was not, which was tech five guesses. Mm. Yeah. So we have someone else now who, again, a total legend. Okay. So number one <laughs> for who am I? I have also played for the Perth Scorchers. Clue number one, <laughs> their birthday. <laughs> Throw a name out. It's for five points, of course, is how Mitchell, it works. Ooh. Mitchell Johnson. Incorrect. Mm. Ashton Agar. Incorrect. Question number two. I won my first 13 tests for my country, a record only bettered. By Adam Gilchrist. Oh, so the first 13 tests this person he played, played. He won all of them. 
and you are the Tim Bresnan. Tim Bresnan. Michael Vaughan for four points. Uh, Tim Bresnan. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even get to clue three. I've scored a century yeah, in Scarborough, good... <laughs> so he's one of the great. Yeah, <laughs> Of course, we really? scorchers too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Timmy Braz. Yeah, well done. How did you know that one, Vaughny? Did you remember that stat about the 13 in a row? Yeah, yeah. I used to remember he used to always take the piss out of everyone who'd, who'd played test cricket. He walked by, he said, I don't know what you guys were doing. <laughs> <laughs> very, oh, that... very good. Nice work, nah. Ol. Well, very. We didn't get clue three. I've scored a century in Scarborough. Clue four. I won the Ashes. Clue five. I am thirty-nine years old today. Timmy Bresnan. There you go. Thirty-nine. He's a youngster, isn't he? Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. I, I think I. I think I was fifteen in a row, and I was walking around like Brez, going, "How hard is it, boys? Come on, that's so." It. In my six. In my sixteenth test, that's when I got the king pair. <laughs> talk about. Talk about the cricket god, gods coming back to bite you. Jesus. Very, very good. Hey, uh, time for the toast, Gilly. Uh-huh. What are we yep. toasting to today? Oh, um, uh, I don't know. Any, any, any nomina- nominations? Uh, Shah Bashir, the uncovering yeah, sure. of a- yeah, another, yeah. another uh, legend that England have uh, unearthed. Uh, a twenty-year-old off-spinning uh, legend, eight wickets in his second Test match. Um, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, Shah Bashir. And I also liked his shot in the first innings when he's got Joe Root 122 not out at the uh, the, the non strikers end, and he tries to launch Ravi Jadeja over wide long on second ball for six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, beautiful. You love a young player coming in uninhibited with no history to be fearful of. So, uh, all right, I'll go with that. Well done to uh, Mr. Bashir. Great uh, well test. Well done, Bash. Well done, Shab. Well done, mate. Test series debut. Yes, Joe. Very good. All right, that was Club Prairie Fire. Um, if you want to follow us on socials, at Club Prairie Fire on everything, uh, Twitter, X, Insta, YouTube, uh, the lot. Uh, big thanks to NordVPN. They're, they're back next week. And- They've already texted me. They're back okay. next week. They love it. They're in again. It's because they're watching oh. this. Yeah, they're watching this. Yeah, yeah exactly right. And I forgot, uh, you, you got your hats, Vaughny. I'll get the yeah, other ones. I'll get the other ones to you, Prof and um, and Ollie, and that means you can then um, do whatever you need to do to offload that other hat, uh, Ollie. Oh, thank and, you. And and any any more, yeah, you know, any requests out there? If anyone wants to, as we say, that the hats are free, along with a I don't know, a thirty forty thousand dollars sponsorship yeah. of the program. They, yeah. they come free. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, when's date number three, Ollie? Um, next, I think it might be after, uh, luckily after the recording Wednesday, potentially. Um, I think it's on the golf course. She's a keen golfer. So, um, yeah, that's exciting. Oh, yeah. Golf. I know. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, exactly. How have, you on a, how, have you got, how have you got on one day and then you've gone to her place for food and now you're yeah. playing golf and you've not got to first base, if you know what I mean, what's happening? <laughs> oh, you're still wearing a hat. <laughs> no one said anything about first base. It was I just stuck to three days. Hey, yeah. And then unrelated Congratulations. News, um, like Horny's oh, team. Change Horny, the subject. Yeah, Horny Church start Horny. their European campaign tomorrow in the league. That's their first game against the Michelin yeah, Eagles. Yeah, Okay. Yeah, I, I, I worry about the horny church and the nightlife of Malaga of uh, the state that they might, might arrive in. But <laughs> I'm back in the horny church to win this. After when, when are our boys Cluj? Yeah, they're going when to are Cluj, Cluj on. Cluj don't start, which is actually timed perfectly. So Cluj start in a couple of weeks, and they're the last group to start, so they can just roll straight into the finals. So they don't start till ah, um, right. second bit of second bit of second week of March. So they'll just roll straight into final mm. 18 to 22nd, which I'm guessing okay. is when they'll want us there. I would imagine. So clear the of diary. Course. All right. Absolutely. Uh, yes, go the Cluj. We were Club Prairie Fire. Uh, we'll see you in Malaga. Bye-bye. <laughs> Adios. 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 If you liked the video, well, first of all, thanks for watching. But if you liked it, uh, give us a like or hit the button below to subscribe. That'd be great.